All right, let's jump right into this. I got myself a cheap ass snowboard on the marketplace. Now for the drivetrain, that's where it becomes interesting. For the past days, I've 3D printed this massive tank thread. It's completely 3D printed. It's from RC Test Flight and he used it for a RC tank that he built and I just scaled it up 160%, so it's massive. Here are the gears. I have some bearings in there. It will all be powered from a chain drive using this electric motor. 360 kV is way too fast, so I got myself a reducer and the chain drive will also increase torque, so hopefully that's gonna be enough. Let me demonstrate how this works. It's real simple. You take one of the gears, wrap the threads around them, and then you take the other gear. No, you don't. Then you take, no, fuck. Screw them together. And we'll connect the chain drive to this outer part. And when it rotates, we have like the ultimate traction machine. Awesome. Now the next step is to somehow mount this on the snowboard. Let's go. Had to do quite a few iterations for this one to work. This is the next key component for this entire project, is the motor to reducer mount. The reducer slots right into that groove and it keeps it in place. The motor will be bolted into place and on the other side we have those gears. So we'll take this metal gear and put on the motor shaft and then put the reducer right on top of it. It's a straight up robbery in today's society. Pillow bearings. They're way too expensive. So I 3D print my own and I just buy the bearing. My level of cheapness is astonishing. Are these things overkill? Most definitely. But you'll see what we've done here. I've made a frame out of aluminum extrusions. I've added the bearings that we built and I've cut out the snowboard so that we can take this chunk of... We'll take the track and put the rod through the bearing inside the gear out to the bearing that we've made to hold everything up. Now we'll take this bearing and put it on the opposite side. Yes! Sick! Comment down below if you think this contraption is gonna work. I don't see how it could fail. That's gonna bite me in the ass. What I've done is, if you look at the board, it sits higher up than the tracks, which is so that the weight from me standing on the board should push the tracks down into the snow and provide traction. Hopefully that's also gonna work. Wait, what? Motor mount in place, we totally need some support for this motor though, and I'm thinking a 3D printed clamp that extrudes down to the board that we then can screw in. So, to the 3D printer. What the fuck? It's really strong, holy sh Yeah, the only thing that happened was that this bearing moved forward. I'll have to put some stoppers or maybe I'll just bolt it right through the aluminium. Here's what full speed looks like.
I was really surprised to see that it moved quite a bit of air as well. I gotta bring this out right now and test it for the very first time. I'll be easy on it. Oh god damn, it broke. I couldn't find a good way to cover up these ugly ass cables. So I just took some oversized heat shrink tubing. What the fuck? I cut it and then I stapled the ends together. We'll see if it works. I don't know if that's better, but at least now it's somewhat protected. We had a couple of tracks break as well. I think that was mostly due to gravel getting stuck in the gears and just disintegrating the tracks. So I replaced the broken track links and fixed the final wiring. Straight from the speed controller, this is the main wire carrying the power through these two cables and a signal cable for the receiver. That will be connected to this device. It's just a BC, basically a devolter. What is that called? Here are the four batteries that we're going to use. It's lithium polymer batteries and it's going to be connected in series and parallel. So we're running a 48 volt system basically. Whoa! Hold Okay, something is wrong. Yeah, that was not good. Okay, literally broke everything. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but both mounts to just break like this. I guess it's just a testimony to how much power it has. I've 3D printed new mounts. Here they are. Looks about the same, but that's about one kilogram of plastic you're looking at right there. The old mount was locked in place. Eventually, I had to introduce the hammer. Now we just need to put all the parts back together. Shouldn't be too hard, but I've surprised myself before, so we'll see what happens. With some minor modifications to the motor mount, the tracks even turned smoother due to better alignment. But now the receiver wouldn't connect and I just couldn't understand why. Eventually I found the taped cable had completely ripped the signal wire inside of it. At this point I was really happy to finally test it and I think that showed. Well, that worked way better than expected. As you can see, we have absolutely no snow here. For the past four months, it's probably been as much snow as you could possibly imagine. Right now, everything is melted away. I think, however, we could find snow at this place. I really scraped the bottom of the barrel to find this place, but it's a ski resort not too far from home. Actually, ski resort is too fancy of a name. There's snow, we can test it. I found a patch of snow. Let's see how it goes. Whoa! You see, I can lean pretty far forward. And, it and it's just gonna spin. But as soon as I put some... As soon as I put some back pressure on it... Gosh, it actually works pretty well. Going back and forth on these tiny patches of snow, it's not going to do me much good. I can't gain any speed, so I think we're just going to have to send it uphill. Look at this. There's the Snowboard 2000. How far up the hill can we make it? Forget uphill, that's just not going to happen. If it doesn't work on one surface, you just gotta find a surface where it works. And I think I have just a spot. I gym a neutron and came up with this place. I'm thinking that we need to push something heavier behind us to propel us forward. And since we have so much torque on the motor, that shouldn't be an issue. Let me give you an insight to the climate that we're having here. It's the biggest lake in Sweden. It's absolutely glacier-like with just water 50 meters out. Everything else is ice. The only thing I've changed from yesterday's fiasco, and I'm sugarcoating it, was adding this box, which now stores the speed controller and the battery related to the receiver, which was very well needed because there was a tiny wire, you may not even have, you may not even have noticed, but it was a tiny wire going along with this giant cable. So now there's only this giant cable, which is a good thing. Oh, 
Maybe if we had a little slope. Is, it's not that it doesn't have power. At this point, to be honest, I was pretty close to just scrap the entire video, but decided last minute to build a tracked one wheel instead. So with a flying piece of aluminium, I started to build the frame. A big time saver was to build a ledge for the already 3D printed motor mount. So now we could finally put it all together. <laughs> yes! That's so sick. I know this must seem so random and oh yeah, it is. I've kept you in the dark. Weren't we building a tracked snowboard just a minute ago? True, this is just an attempt for redemption on my part. So I built allegedly the world's first tracked one wheel with chain drive and 3D printed tracks I may add. Oh yeah, I haven't tested this at all, so we're all about to find out if it works. Boom! Well, there's no lack in power. I mean, at least it takes my weight. Why am I even using 48 volts at this point? So let's just reduce the voltage and see if that helps. All right, so instead of two batteries in series, I'm just gonna, let's just try one battery and see if it works. Whoa! Around here, that's considered success. Oh my Oh, hell no. I had to replace a few broken links once again, but decided to also lower the voltage and that provided me a lot better control. So we started at 48 volts down to 24, now we're at 16. I can't go any lower than this, this is gonna be the last shot. All for that initiated torque to be as low as possible. All right, now it just doesn't have enough torque to even... No, it can't do it. Okay, I'm gonna go and get the 24 volt. It doesn't necessarily have to be that the voltage is too low. These were the only four cell batteries that I had. Ugh. Fuck. Sometimes your project just ends up not working out and that's okay because we learn things along the way. Like for example, plastic is plastic and plastic breaks. I am mostly an average guy, so if I like something, it's a pretty good chance that you would like it as well. And I'm not a fan of diving into books, so if I could learn something on an interactive platform that teaches me key concepts of everything from data science and math to technology and programming, I'm all for it. And that is what Brilliant can offer. Whichever field you may already have mastered, there are thousands of lessons from basics to advanced topics. You can start out by taking a quiz and you will be matched with content that fits your skill level and interests. Yeah, you could try Brilliant out for free, that's pretty cool, by going to brilliant.org slash And if you would like to sign up for an annual premium subscription, the first 200 people to do so gets 20% off through that link. So I will make sure to put that in the description below. Thank you Brilliant for sponsoring the video and thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it a bunch. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. See you again soon. Bye.